feels like it's been a while. Welcome to Solofero and Tato. Antonio, welcome to you all. I hope you've had a good day. Has it been raining where you are? We had a nice day in where I am today, but yesterday it was pouring with rain. Okay. Got it. Got it. So, you know the drill. While we're waiting for everyone to get set up, there's two questions that are on the board, and these refer to the previous um, lesson that we were having. And I would like you to try and start figuring those out, and then we will start talking properly in a moment. Um, Nikayla is with us today because Alzan, I think, is having computer issues, and this happens to the most of us. So, welcome, Nikayla. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How is the weather in your part of the world, Nikayla? Is it is it ha is it happy or is it sad with them? Really happy, very hot. I think it was like 31 today. Oh, really? Oh, that's very yeah. that's too hot. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> okay. And and our classmates, what's it been like where you are in the in the world? Has it been rainy or cold? Has it been hot? It's sort of about 25 degrees, no, about 23 degrees today in, in Cape Town. Pretty nice, not too windy. So that was good. Okay. All right, people. So um, it is now four minutes past. I think we're going to get going. Um, Nikayla, is there anything else from you? Have we have everything set up? We're working. Um, okay. So I want you to try and do the do now question. In the last lesson, we were talking about uh, this thing called probability, which is quantifying uncertainty or giving numbers to uncertainty. And these are, you know, this. Often we talk about um, there's two main types. There's experimental probability and theoretical. The one you actually do something, the one you just think. Uh, and so these are just two quick questions that deal with the one deals with theoretical probability, the one with experimental. And I want you to see, can you get the answers? And I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try and send you a poll if I can figure out how to do that. So, so wish me luck. Let's have a look if I can find that. Where do I send this poll from? Let's see. Here's my control bar. That can go there. And that can go there. Control chat participants. Nikayla, can you see the polls function? You're the host. Can you see the polls function at the bottom of your Zoom control? Yes. Can you, because I, I seem to have lost that control. Could you push oh, out the yeah, one that says do now? Or, or in fact, do you want to maybe make me, I don't know. Yes. I'm going to yeah. maybe make you. Post again. Yeah. Post. I just somehow lost that, that functionality. Sorry about that. No, 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 it's fine. I just, this is my new toy for the, like, I want to see if I can make this work. I'm all excited. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I'll oh, hand it over. Okay. And then I think this will magically reappear. Let's have a look. The wonders of technology. <laughs> so everybody in the background, you are still doing this question. And I am going to, yes, I'm going to send you a poll for these questions. So I'm going to launch it now. And if you can see a poll on your screen, will you please give me a thumbs up? There's, there's question one, which has four options or five options, A to E. And there's question two, which has five options and i want to see if you can just see it give me a thumbs up i, th I thought i saw a thumbs up there or two i saw zami valerie yeah no there's some thumbs fantastic guys awesome awesome i love it i love something new and obviously now i want you to try and think about an answer to this question so i'll give you a bit more time uh and then you're going to lock in your answers and then when i end the poll or when you're doing it, I can, um, yeah, I'll give you a bit of time. Let's see if we can do this. So Wesley has six green, four pink, two white, and eight blue. And basically they're in a bag. 
And um, what is the probability one to, okay, I'm not gonna do this whole thing, but let's call these G for green. And then he has two white, he has four, I should probably be doing in different colors, hey? And then eight blue, oh my goodness, oh, this is not. <laughs> the main thing I'm interested in actually is the total. Ah, well, you know, almost got there now. Okay, so we have six plus four is 10. So the total number of things is 20, but I'm asked the probability and the probability is the number of all possible outcomes over the number of favorable outcomes for this question. And a favorable outcome is getting a green block. So how many greens are there? Well, there are six, but now all my answers except this E are out of 10. So I'm gonna have to think about what that means. Oh, I see my answers coming in. If you, if you can see the answers as they come in, can you guys see the answers as they come in? Like the people voting? Because I can see the I can see what you guys have voted for so far. It's quite cool. Can someone just jump on the the mic and tell me? Can you see other what other people are voting, or do you see nothing? Uh, no, we can't see. Okay. All right. So so far, I'll tell you what's there. So far, the two options that people are going for on question number one is A and D, and on question number two, they're going for A and C. So that's where the spread of the questions are at this stage. And I want you to think, what do I need to do with six out of 20 to convert it to a fraction out of 10? So that's quite an important idea, right? So if I wanted to, we've kind of reached the stage here, how do I convert that to a fraction out of 10? Does anybody want to tell us? Be brave. I want to hear a voice. Okay, so I'm gonna end the poll now and then I'm gonna see if you guys can see the results. So let's say end now. And I'm gonna share the results with you guys. If you can share, if you can see the res see the results, give me a thumbs up. Yes, we can see them. See the results. Okay, so this is a wonderful mechanism that we can use in future just to get some extra feedback. Even if on this first time it feels a bit strange, I think this has good potential for just getting the back and forth going. Now, the good news is the answer is A as far as I can see. Uh, so let me quickly show you what happens. Uh, so six out of 20, if you divide the top and bottom by two, you get three out of 10, which is A. Okay, so the first one is gonna be three A. And then the second one, let's get rid of this. It's like a warp. So this first one was actually what we call theoretical probability because we didn't actually do anything. We just thought about what might happen. But the second one, we actually went out and surveyed people. So this is uh, the, the grade nine student council surveyed the students about their favorite color t-shirts. Okay, so maybe you're getting a school t-shirt and the graph over here shows the results and there's four different colors. If the class is 250 members, what is the best prediction of the number who would prefer blue? So the probability of this class that someone prefers blue is going to be, uh, what is it? It is 10%, right? So 10%. And so if I want to know what's the best prediction of the number who prefer blue, I'm just going to go 250 times 10% or 0 0.01 and I get 25 and I get A. Okay, so that was just the warm up for today. Let's get let's get moving. So I just in the previous lesson we spoke about these things called Venn diagrams. And so I actually want to spend a little bit of time talking about Venn diagrams and getting some opinions. But um let's just start with that. Like why do we have Venn diagrams? What do they actually do? And, and how are they related to probability? And you can put in the chat or you can jump on the mic and just give me a little like, well, I know from class or I just want to get a feel for how well you know Venn diagrams. 
Um, what, why do we even have them? Like, what's their use? Or am I just, as math teachers, do we get together and decide we just like to make people's lives difficult? They must have some value. Lumka, what do you think? Why do you think we have Venn diagrams? Tazneem, what do you think? Toko, solo fellow. You can put it in the chat. You can put it in the, you can use the mic. It's magical. Technology will just send your voice over the airwaves. Give me a thumbs up if you have heard of Venn diagrams before. Give me a thumbs down if you like, I don't know what Venn diagrams are at all. I just want to see how much. Oh, okay, so some of you, yes, some of you know. Keep those hands. So up, you've heard of Venn diagrams. Down, you've just like, oh, no, I don't even know what this thing is. Okay. All right, so I, I, you do need some, okay, so I'm going to give you a good little overview. So when we deal with probability studies, the main goal is to find how, if I have, I know at the moment it feels a bit artificial, but we're trying to take things that are uncertain and assign numbers to them, give them um, probabilities. And the probability scale exists from naught to one, where naught is, can never happen and one is certain. And like throwing a, dice is halfway between or throwing a heads is 50% because it's a uh, one in two chance. Now we spoke about that in the previous lesson. You can always go back and look at that. But the problem becomes if you just stay with numbers the whole time, it gets very, very confusing. And so what a Venn diagram helps us to do is it helps us to see visually the relationships between collections of things. So whenever we calculate a probability, the main formula you'll see me use is number of possible outcomes over number of favorable. Now, that's a bit of a weird way to say it, I suppose, but possible means what's possible for the question. So in the example we're gonna do now, there's a collection of things that go from one to 30. So the number of possible outcomes at the beginning is one to 30. If I say to you, what's the probability of getting a prime number, then the number of favorable outcomes are numbers that are prime. So that will change by each question. But it gets very complicated if, if I just stay in number and word land. Our brains translate things in visuals much easier. And so what a Venn diagram helps us to do is it helps us to see the relationships between, we call um, the set S, the set P, the set M, and the set F. And that's what we're going to try and do here. Now, S, the set S is often called the sample space or the number of possible outcomes. And basically inside this big rectangular block, all the numbers from one to 30 are gonna sit. But inside of that collection are smaller families. For example, multiples of three. So let me, and that family is called the family M. And sometimes you'll see it written in notation like this. So let's, multiples of three would be three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and 30. So these are the, the objects or the items in the set M. And then I also want to know what is in the collection F. Can somebody jump on and give me a, what is in the collection of, of F? What are the factors of 30? I want to hear a voice. I'm worried that you guys are bots. Um, Okay, let me quickly do that. So, or you can type in the chat, but I want to, I want to see my people. I want to hear, I want to know who I'm teaching. Uh, and the way you're going to show me is what are the factors of 30? Let me find the different people in the call. Um, Elzon, are you with us? Hey, I hear you. Hey, Peter, I'm user. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I'm looking for you. Are oh, you user? It's a very, yes. uh, very 
So does it make you co-host? Can I make you co-host? That would be great. That would be cute. Awesome. Okay. So I'm looking. What, what are the factors of 30, everyone? Uh, yep. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Is it like maybe... What is I'm it? I'm not even sure. I don't even know. Is it like... Oh. Okay. Okay. So number one. Number one. Alzana, you're getting very bad audio. Alzana, you're getting very bad audio. Uh, yes. I wonder what's causing that. Um, maybe it's some some network. Um, if Tumelo, if you can maybe just hop out and hop back in, then we can see if your network would work better. Are you hearing me? Okay, though. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sort of fellow for that attempt there. So um, factors of 30. Well, I'm gonna say what numbers divide 30 exactly. So one, two. Now you must check me that I don't make a mistake here. Three, four doesn't go into 30, five goes into 30, six, seven doesn't, eight doesn't, nine doesn't, ten. 11, no, 12, no, 13, no, 14, no, 15, yes, and 30. And this makes sense because they're these little pairs. Okay, so we've got my collection. So we've got F, and then what about P? What is What are the prime numbers from 1 to 30? I'm sure someone can tell me this. Zemi, what are the prime numbers for, between 1 and 30? Two, three, and five. Awesome. Um, are there any? Are there any more? But that's great. We've got three of them. Valerie, can you add something for me? Tolo fellow, can you add something for me? Toko, what are the other prime numbers from one to thirty? Sneaky primes. So what about seven is, is the next one? Oh, I see total fellow. I see nine, nine. Nine is not prime because nine is divisible by three. So, uh, but seven is, so that's correct. 13, 11. Oh, now I see them primes. Fantastic. Make sure I don't miss one. Uh, they're hiding. You know, the primes are actually super important in maths. Do you know that your WhatsApp is encrypted with primes, but that's a story for another time. Uh, 11, 13, I like it, 17. Let's see if I can. Um, so 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, you guys are smashing it, and 29. Okay. These are my collections of items, and I'm going to put them in a Venn diagram soon, but we're going to do a little bit of revision. I want to know what N of M is, what N of F is, and what N of P is. Uh, can someone tell me what the little N in front means in probability and set notation? What does it mean when I put an N in front of a big capital letter and that capital letter is a set? It's quite important. Teachers, <laughs> this can come up in lots of exams, many places in the country. It sounds a bit like M and M, but it's N of M. So the N means the number of items in the list or the number of items in the set. So what I'm going to do is if we go and look at the M, there's one. Okay, I shouldn't cross them out, I suppose, but let's make a dot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten items in the set of M. And then for F, one, two, three, it looks a bit like Christmas here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, and then. For P, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Give me a thumbs up if you understand how I got those those numbers. Give me a thumbs down if you're like, 
what are you doing, crazy man? Aha. All right. So I see some thumbs up. Okay, fantastic. If I said to you, what is the N of S? What would the answer be? Pop it in the chat or shout it out loud. I'm looking for some chats. I see some thumbs down. That's fine. Aha, yes, you are getting this, people. You are getting it. So the number of items in the sample space is 30. Okay, now I'm going to take it up a little bit even more. Before I draw my, my Venn diagram, I'm just, this is such a good learning opportunity. If I said to you, um, so if I said to you, take, F and or what items are in F and are in P and what, let's do that. I want you to look over here at F and P and I want you to tell me how many items are there or what does the, I want you to write this down for yourself. What does the collection F and P collect? Oh, sorry. What's yeah. Which items are in both F and P? And F is over here and P is over here. F stands for the factors of um, 30 and P stands for the primes from one to 30. And I want to know which items are in both. And maybe you can visually see when you've got the answer, could you put it in the chat? How would I do this? If I want to know what objects or what items are in both, is one in both of these? No. Is two in both of these? Oh, yes, it is. I'm lucky I've got these colors here. <laughs> is three in both? Yes, it is. Is five in both? Yes, it is. Um, is six? No. Is seven? No. Is 10 in both? No. Okay, do you see what I'm, what I'm doing with this? Okay. Seven, no, 11, 20. Yeah, yeah. Aha, I see that answer. Lumka, I think that you are right. Two, three, and five. Now, these are the elements that are in both um, the F set and the P set. Let me quickly get my colors. Now, this is important. A fancy way of writing this is, remember the last lesson I said to you, what was the symbol for and? I think I said to you, you have to do this chore and you have to do that chore. And that makes you unhappy. So what is the symbol that I use for and? Can anyone remember? I try to be clever and, and pair it with an idea. It looks like an A, but it doesn't have that connecting thingy. Yeah. So it looks, it looks like that. Hey? I call it the unhappy face. <laughs> That's why I was trying to pair it with this idea of like chores, like you have to do this chore and that chore. And so if you see this fancy looking like unhappy face, just know it's saying which items are in both F and P. Okay. And that's, it's, we use the word and. So this is just more language. And then we also sometimes use the word or, which is a slightly different thing. So, if I said to you what items are in F or in P, I think it makes sense that there would be more items. What are going to be the items in F or P? So we can actually do this a bit quicker because actually it's going to be everything that's in both. So we're going to have um, one, two, three, five, Six, seven, 10, 11, 13, 17, 19. I know I'm doing this. Okay. Now, all I wanted to show you is that when we use the word and and we use the word or, they mean very specific things. And the symbol for or is, is the happy face. So if I say if, or P, and the way I think about this is 
if somebody offers you sweets and you and they say you could have this or you could have this or you could have both and so all is a happy face okay so that was important because before i draw the venn diagram now can you see how cluttered my screen has got now oh i left 15 out thank you well spotted it you guys are on a shout out to tolo fellow because you are on form now i'm sure some of you are already feeling like oh my goodness man this is just too much clutter and i agree with you but i know that if i if i make your lives cluttered and i now show you how beautiful the drawing of the diagram is you will understand why venn diagrams are so awesome whereas if you don't like climb the hill of lots of symbols and stuff you don't appreciate the beauty of the venn diagram okay so let's do the venn diagram so what the venn diagram says is it says look let's take these relationships and let's say set m um now are there items actually in fact let me do this if i want to do a drawing i need to know are there items in each of these sets in common and i think there are like if you look at the the, the item three the item three is in every single one of these sets okay um if and which that means is there must be what's called an intersection of all three sets and often what we do is if we want to understand how these if we want to draw them as a relationship we need a way of drawing them and so this is what students get confused about first they see these funny funky drawings like it's the fast and the furious all this is doing is it's giving me a representation of each relationship and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say m is up here f can be here and p can be here now we know in total that there are going to be 30 items in here but some of these things are in two of the combi two of the sets some of them are in only one and where they go gives us really important information give me a thumbs up if you've seen this type of drawing before give me a thumbs down if you like this is very very new to me okay a couple of thumbs up um alzan anything from you just i'm taking quite a bit of time to do this but i know this is important um okay okay everything's perfect on our side peter okay <laughs> perfect all right so what i'm going to say is that if you think about the objects it can take a while but essentially you're going to know that the three has to be in the middle there right so let's cross it off there's the three is there anything else that is in all three of these things is there anything else is six in all three no is nine in all three this could go a while okay now I'm trying to think if actually okay because of the fact of time i'm actually not going to go through this whole example i'm going to move on to an example that shows you this idea in a little bit less clutter but can you see working out which items are in f but not in say other things is an important idea let's just do a couple of them i won't do the whole thing because it'll just take too long okay let's figure out where six goes is six in m yes which means that it has to be somewhere inside this thing but there are four different regions it could be in now six is also in f okay so six is also in f and it's not in this one over here p so if six is in m and f but it's not in p do you do you see how six has to be in this area over here if six was here it wouldn't be in the set f if 6 was where the 3 is it would be in p and we know it's not if 6 was out here it wouldn't be in m f or p and so i know that the 6 has to be in that area and let me zoom in for a second so i'm just going to do two or three more of these and then we're going to go on to a simpler example because i've kind of got a bit carried away with this idea but i I just I know students really don't understand this well and so I'm taking the time to try and do it properly. Okay. 9. Is 9 9 is an M. So I know that 9 has to fall within this circle for M. 
But there are different regions. Oh, flip. I made something disappear. <laughs> Can I bring it back? Okay, well, let's bring it back. Um, is nine in F? No. Is nine in P? No. So I know nine is in M. And so nine is going to be in this area here. Now it would take a long time, but each of these, um, knowing that some numbers belong to M, some numbers belong to both M and F, some numbers belong to all three is one of the main ideas you need to get comfortable with. And we're going to practice on that um, moving on. Okay. Give me a little in the, in the chat, or actually give me a thumbs up if you feel like, okay, I'm sort of getting this. Give me a thumbs down if you like. Too much detail, man. Too much detail. Okay. Then we go boldly on. I see some happy faces, so I'm, I'm moving on. This is a Venn diagram. I want you to try and answer A, B, C, D, and E. These are two sets, P and Q. I want you to try and list the answers. And each of these, you have to list the values. So I'll do the first one. Use the Venn diagram to list the values which lie in P and Q. Well, P and Q could only be this region over here because over here would just be P. So the first one's answer is going to be three and six. And actually, I shouldn't do that. I should just do a, a list. So it's okay. So I want you to try and do B, C, D, E. I've spoken a lot. It's time for you to shine. And then I will give you some answers in a moment. Welcome, Asim Akhle and Boitemelo. I don't think I've said hello to you yet. Ora Tilwe, welcome. Sinisipo, Sinisipo, welcome. Yeah, I definitely see our regulars. Fantastic. Remember, I was um, telling one of my nieces about Watobe's classes because she was stressing out. She's in grade 10 and she's getting ready for her final exams. Don't forget to tell your friends because I know a lot of people are under a lot of stress. And I think a lot of the exam crash courses that we'll be doing over the next couple of weeks will be helpful to lots of students. So please do spread the good news. Yes. Okay. So for B, I think the P or Q the answers would be three, six, Two and nine. Uh, P only in P, but not in Q. That would just be nine. Uh, Q only in Q, but not in P would just be two. And neither in P nor Q. Now, often in these diagrams, the region, basically, if you're not, it's going to be or the green area is not in P or Q. Now the word not is also really important in probability. It comes to this, this idea of a complementary event, which I'll talk about. But knowing where something is like, is in P or not in P and knowing which region it corresponds to is a really important idea for this section. So um, neither P nor Q is just gonna be four, five, seven, and eight. And so that's going to be these things that are sitting outside the circles. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. I think we can we can move on. Let's keep rolling. Okay, so let's do this. I want you to draw a Venn diagram to illustrate this information. So 150 people were asked which type of movie they like to watch. Um, I want you to do this. Draw a Venn diagram and while you're drawing that, I'm going to push out a poll, which says, um, I want to know how you're actually working. Like, what is the setup you're working with? Uh, and so 
you can do that. And then you'll notice also that while you're doing that, a poll should pop up. And I'm just, I'm interested to know what is the environment that you're studying in. So when you're setting up to listen to me and to work along, you know, what are the, the resources you have at your disposal? Um, Ozan, can you see the poll? Yes, Peter, the poll is here. <laughs> Perfect. It's my new trick for the week. I try to learn something new every week. <laughs> I like it. I think it's very cool. We'd yeah. love to see your guys' answers. I am, yeah. And the good thing is we can, um, I can actually share the answers once everyone's voted. I can share the answers anonymously, which is fantastic. And it's so helpful for us to know kind of what, what the students can do like, or what is like, oh my gosh, this is like gymnastics. I can't be opening up tabs and other windows or whatever. That's very cool. I <laughs> like that. Cool. I can tell I'm actually a dot and nut. I do like information and making decisions based on information. I think my brain just goes that way. Hmm. Okay, so remember we're answering the poll, but we're also trying our best to answer the question. So all Venn diagrams, normal. there is some flexibility. You don't have to have the outside rectangle, but often the outside rectangle is the sample space. Um, there are 150 people in the sample space and uh, I'm going to make one circle for action. 55 said they liked comedy and there are some people who liked both, which means there must be an intersection of these two sets. There must be some people who like both action and comedy. So that would be the first bit. And then... Um, the question is, where do I start? Because I, I want to actually fill out these different regions because these different regions represent the uncertain information. And that's why Venn diagrams are so, because they make it easy to understand the relationship. But I, I want to know from you, where do I start if I'm trying to figure out how many numbers, where they go? Maybe you've seen it in class. Maybe you've picked it up somewhere. I'm not sure. You first put in the people that are within the intersection, the people that like both of them, which would be the 23. That is absolutely correct. Because you know, you don't have to work out anything more to know that 23. You know there are only 23 people in A and C. That is perfect. Who Was that Zimi? Was that you? Yes, it was. Well done. That's perfect. Um, okay, now. Once we've got that, it's almost like you do the stuff you know you could do. 80 said they liked action, but you know that in this part here is 80, but you've already used up 23. And so what I'm going to do, this region is just 80 minus 23, which if my maths is any good, which hopefully it is, it's 57. So we'll get rid of that. And then... Comedy, 55 liked comedy, but again, I have to watch out. It's not 55, and this is what students do. It's 55 minus 23 because you've already used up this bit here. Let's just get rid of that little bit there. Okay, so what is that going to be? 55 32. It's 22. No? It's 32. 22, yeah. 32. Perfect. Okay, and now we have to figure out how many are out here. Hmm. How would we work this out? Well, isn't this 150 quite important? So what's going to be is 150. I know what, what these are. I know what's in this region. Well, excuse me, because I can add them up. And I want to know what's here. So I think I just go 150 minus 57 minus 23, minus 32, and, you know, no harm in using my calculator, 150. 38. It's, okay, 38, huh? 38, spot on. Okay, now let me just show you how we can extend this question to probability, because at the moment you may think, like, we're just counting things, like, why, where are the actual probability questions? But a typical probability question would be, like, uh, what is the probability of 
if you are surveying someone, what is the probability of um, both A and, okay, so I'm going to use some scary looking notation. So you'll see these weird symbols. Now, remember, this is an unhappy face and the unhappy face stands for and. What is the answer to this going to be? What's the, for this question, what's the probability of um, someone being in A and C or someone liking both action and comedy? If you're surveying 150 people, these people, and you choose one person randomly, what is the probability that they will like uh, action and comedy? I'd like an answer, please. 23 over 150. I, I heard that, 23 over 150. Yep, because here's the A and C region, and in total you have 150. Okay, fantastic. Um, I'm going to end the poll so that you guys can see the results. I'm just going to take a screenshot quickly so I don't lose them. Um, at least I don't think I'll lose them now. End poll. Okay, so can you guys see the the setup of the answers? Give me a give me a thumbs up if you um, can see the answers to the poll, and give me a thumbs down if you can't see them. I'm just trying to take. Oh, you can't see the answers. Oh, share results. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> Okay. So I'm just taking some screenshots just so that I can see. Okay, can you see them now? Thumbs up for if you can see them, thumbs down. Oh, I see some thumbs gone up. Fantastic. Okay, and so what we'll do is to try and make the lessons better, I will tr try and take this information into account going forward, okay? And so this is how we get to know each other, like by doing these little surveys and figuring out what works best for everyone. Okay, let's go to the next. This is on to proper exam questions here now. I want you to try and do this question for me. Still got a bit of time. And then while you do that, I'm going to have a look at these results. So you've given a Venn diagram and uh, it's about playing cards. And often probability questions are about playing cards because you know, when we draw a pack of cards, it's a very natural thing to say, okay, what's coming next? Um, I'm going to assume how many cards are there in a pack of cards? Ooh, that's a good question, isn't it? Um, well, we've got aces to 10. If you count aces one and you go to 10, that's 10. And then you've got jack, queen, king. So I would say each suite has 13. I'm going to exclude jokers at this stage. Um, and then 13 times 4 would give me 52. So we have 52 cards. If they were jokers, you'd have 56. So I want to know, can you do B, C, D, E, and F? I'll give you a bit of time. Now, one thing I must tell you is I obviously go quite quickly when I'm, I'm doing these, but you do need to take the time to read. So playing cards, which are black, as well as the number of cards that are seven. So you're focusing on that. Okay. There we go. Hmm. Okay, let's have a look. So, oh, what happened there? I made something disappear. Oh, well. Um, there's my chat stream. Okay, so uh, there's two red and two black. So I guess that would be 26 for B. 
And then how many sevens are there in the playing cards? There are four. Um, how many uh, cards are black or seven? Oh, this is interesting, hey? Okay, so this is where we might need to figure this out because there's some cards that are black and there's some cards that are seven. Now, how many, or this is where the drawing is so helpful because in your brain, it's, it's a bit messy otherwise. In the total pack of cards, there are four um, sevens. That's why this has got this X and four minus X. In a suite of cards, there's 26 that are black. How many are both black and seven? I think the answer here has to be two. There's the clubs and the spades, which means that two types of sevens are not black. They're the red ones, which is going to be here, four minus two. And then the cards that are only black, but not sevens. Wait, let's make this 26 minus six. Oh, 20 cards that are black, but are not sevens. They're going to be 26 minus two, which is 24. This is why these diagrams are incredible. It's so confusing to think through that if you can't see it visually. But when you think about it, there's two black cards that are sevens. And then the other parts, the maths makes perfect sense. Now, outside of that, there are 24 left because there's 28 in here and 28 plus 24 gives me 52. Okay, so let's answer the question for D. How many cards are black or seven? Well, black or seven is going to be all of these guys. Oh, I do like my highlighter as well. Magic. Uh, I'm going to have 28 is what I get. Give me a thumbs up if you, if you see how I got that. Give me a thumbs down if you like, don't know what's going on. Okay, good, good. See a couple of thumbs. Fantastic. Um, find the value of X where X is the number of black sevens in a pack of playing cards. Okay, we kind of got that already using common sense. Um, we could have done this using like, like an identity by saying, look, in total, I know that there are 52 and adding up the different regions. And you could have just done it with an e equation. I'm not going to do that now, but we'll do it in later questions. And we've already subbed in there. Okay, let's see if we can squeeze in. Uh, okay, I'll start the next lesson with that. Okay. Guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish with a quiz, but we do need to, at the beginning of the next lesson, we're going to work on um, what's called, we're going to move on to more complicated Venn diagram questions. And we're also going to do a tree diagram. But I think for today, I actually just want to consolidate the good work that we've done with an exit ticket. Uh, and so let's do that and have some fun. I think I've spoken enough. And I think that you guys can, can do this. So, and then Alzan will hand back to you with enough time. Uh, so can everybody please go to joinmyquiz.com and then type the code 59116353. Uh, and I will even show you what you're missing out on if you're not participating with us on this. Uh, new window. Actually, I need a new... I need to make sure I'm on the right Google profile. Um, or do I? Quizzes. No, I don't actually. I can be on the account. Okay. This is some serious multitasking. Okay, so we're going to go to joinmyquiz.com. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to share my browser. And hopefully you can see that. And so when you go to join my quiz, I'll type it again, joinmyquiz.com. You're going to get this and you're going to enter a code 5911. Six, three, five, three, join. And then, so you're going to, now you can turn the music and the sound effects off, um, but I'm, I'm going to do that now just so that I don't blast myself. But essentially that is, okay. And I can see that 
Valerie's there, Tolo Fellows there, Zemi's there, Toko's there, or Tiwe's there. Fantastic. Come and join us, guys. Let's play for five minutes. Um, and then we will end. Oh, let's put the music on a little bit. Get some of that. Okay, you may begin. Uh, have I... Have I not started the game? Maybe. Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, there we go. Let the games begin. Ozan, can you or, uh, give me a thumbs up if you're in and you can, you know what's going on? I feel like I'm trying to do too much here. Peter, now we can see you. Huh? Oh, you would you like me to share my screen so long? Um, you can share your screen, yeah. That would be awesome. And then hopefully the students are doing that in the background. Um awesome. Uh, but yeah, I think I've had too many tabs open. I've got tab fatigue. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, we learn every day. We do, or we at least we try to, so <laughs> Okay. So, so we'll just give, them, that, we'll give them like um, two more minutes just to try and engage. Because I think they are okay. busy doing it um, right now. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Cool. No, I don't want to confuse you guys as well. Yeah. So give them yeah, just two more minutes. Uh, and I will try and open up a... I think I can actually see what's going on if I get onto the right profile. Hmm. Like a dashboard type of thing. I'm just going to bring that, in fact, um, yeah, I can see there's eight people at the moment doing it. At the moment, it's Valerie, Antonio, Zimi, Oretiwe, Toko, Tolofelo, and Sinisipo are busy doing it. Okay, I tell you what, like always, probably Elzan, it's better to just say, look, guys, can you please finish this straight away after? Don't leave it. Try and do it now. Um, and they can finish it after the lesson. Um, and then you can, we can wrap things up. I think that's the best way. I always run a bit late, but this is just how things go, I guess. <laughs> that's part of life. Okay. Over to you, Ozan. Thanks, everyone, today. I hope that you enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, let's hear how it was for you in these last couple of minutes. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for all your hard work. As you can see, we finished our seventh lesson today. So that means there's only one more left um, regarding stats and probability. Like I said last time, if you have any questions, like take this time, ask Peter. And if you are struggling with something, make a note of that, then you bring it to the next class as well so that we can talk about that. Um, Peter, it is probability revision next week. Am I right? Yeah, so the, we're going to be doing, it is a revision. We're also going to be um, basically wrapping up the section. So any questions that they want to cover, we can cover. But I'll also be just carrying on with Venn diagrams and tree diagrams. That's the last bit. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm adaptable. If they've got something that they really want to focus on, they can send that ahead of time. But otherwise, I'm just going to, I know roughly where the, the work needs to be mm -hmm. done. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, guys. So one last lesson left, and this will happen on Thursday. Today's Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So um, before then, you guys can go onto the Watobi app. Oh, yes. And the leaderboard will be showing again on Thursday. So for all those who haven't seen the leaderboard yet, this is where your name can be if you have done as many lessons as possible to understand, to revise, and to equip mm. yourself with stats and probability. So be sure to go onto the Watobi app. Um, I'm going to show you where to go now. So for this lesson, you can go into probability, the topic of probability. Then if you scroll down, you will find probability rules. 
Yeah. And then you'll see complementary events. So that's one lesson. And then there's a second lesson as well. And that's under contingency tables. And that's yeah. just the introduction to two-way tables. Is that correct, Peter? Awesome. Yeah. Okay, guys. So you can do this before Thursday. And then if there's anything else that you want to go into and go figure out or just see mm -hmm. if you understand it, go and practice. And uh, then we'll see you again on Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Before we go, um, just to also then remind them that we're starting next week a exam preparation course um, mm -hmm. where the focus will be more explicitly on, say, like paper one and paper two, and then really sort of uh, zoning in based on what the students need. We'll start by saying, okay, this is what's in paper one, this is in paper two, here's a summary and then we can dive into the areas where perhaps students feel like, Oh, I had to do this online at home and I have no clue. Oh, so just to make you aware of that, it's coming up. Uh, and then, yeah, just to, how was today? I guess, you know, like any sort of, Yay. Like, no. Can we get some emojis, yeah. some reactions, or you can unmute yourself and tell us. Yeah. Let's hear those voices. <laughs> got some. Tada emojis thumbs up the confused <laughs> face okay. that's good confused so what would you do if you're a bit confused indeed i'm interested, so, solution. I'm interested to know what areas are you confused so or, or what um, was the diagrams or was it um you know like I, as a teacher i'm always interested to know where students are being like going off the path or need some extra help. So, so mm -hmm. just shout it out. <laughs> I wonder, Peter, should we maybe create a poll for that? That is a good idea. Yes. I, I, in fact, next time I will have a poll ready for that and we can, we can go from there. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. It was, no, he has a good thing. Lumka was saying there's so much data to use that it was kind of hard to keep up. And you know what? I mm -hmm. think that's fair because mm -hmm. especially that first example, there is a lot of detail, but it's just like you only have to do it. I think maybe go back to the recording. And if you watch that part over again, you'll see there's a lot of really good information in it. And I know it is quite a lot. Um, but I do think from experience that it's worth it. Just maybe watch it a second time. Um, and that's the beauty of having a recording, you know, um, but it was quite a lot going on. I agree. <laughs> so don't be discouraged, Lumka. That is a totally normal feeling. And probably lots of people in the group have it as well. Yeah. So I'm just putting it on here. Watch mm. what Toby's YouTube live recordings. If you guys want to... Mm. Yeah, just go go through some of the work again and revise. Cool. Okay, awesome. people. Thank you, guys. Bye. Take care. Cool. Cheers, everyone. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye, bye. 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 Best of luck, everyone. I'll see you soon. Hmm.